Hello, I'm Jenna. And I'm Jill. This is ASL Stew Life. So today, I thought we would try something different and new. It seems like it's a new trend on YouTube. It's called a uh, mukbang. And it's an eating show where you just talk and eat and on camera and have a conversation so you guys can watch and eat with us if you want to on your own time. Why not? Yeah. Um, you can have dinner or lunch or breakfast, whatever you want, at the same time we are. So today we are eating, well, I'm eating two things because I'm a pig, but she's eating one thing because she has a little stomach. Anyways, we are both eating pizza, homemade pizza with naan bread. Ooh, yummy. And I have french fries that I made by myself with no oil. And I have a recipe, which I will try to link. It's a pretty old one, but I will try. So here's that. And I have some ketchup. So that's what we're going to do. So do you want to start explaining about that? And I'm going to start eating. Why do you get to eat first? Fine. I'll talk. You eat. No, no. I'll go ahead and talk first. Yeah, the cats. They always are bothering us. Well, I guess we can talk about, it seems there is a quite a serious hot debate going on on YouTube right now, talking about age restriction related to LGBTQ videos. If they're labeled with anything like that, then it becomes age-restricted, right? Not really age-restricted, but I'm going to explain what happened. You go ahead and you know, I'll explain. So, recently I was watching a few different like news videos talking about that. And apparently what happened, well, the big controversy is because it's in the LGBTQIA uh, queer community. So, but anyways, what happened, apparently... I, I didn't know about it. Many people didn't know about it, but there's a specific part under YouTube where you can like pick either, what's well, like a filter? So either none or strict. So those are the only two options. There's only two. So anyways, if you click none, then you can watch whatever you want. If you clicked on the strict, then that means that it will restrict your ability to watch certain videos. Like for example, uh, one of the channels that I watch, uh, Philly D, uh, the TV news, uh, the Philip DeFranco show. Anyways, he has quite a lot of different mature type of videos. And so if you click on strict, his channel is like totally blank. It's like there's nothing there. And the big controversy, though, is if you click the strict filter, anything related to the LGBTQIA queer uh, sort of topics is restricted. Meaning you can't see, like, for example, Tyler Oakley recently had a video called something, like I haven't seen it, but something that I've heard called, like, the top or my favorite 10 people of color, LGBTQIA people that have inspired or something like that. And that one is restricted under the strict filter. So it's like, I understand, like, I guess... But why LGBTQIA? Like some of that information, yes, is mature. Maybe if it's talking about sex or other things. But of course, like you can restrict that regardless, no matter who. But if it's related to the LGBTQIA, I mean, that's the issue I'm having a problem with. Right. You know, sometimes, like the two of us sometimes talk about LGBTQ topics. And it's not mature. It's, we're not talking about sex or anything like that. You know, LGBTQIA is not all about just sex. You know, it's about attraction sometimes. Yes, that's part of it. But there's more to it than that. It's your life. It's an experience. It's your identity. Yeah, it's not even all about that. It really could be trans. Well, maybe you don't know, but there's a really famous, a really famous trans person, Gigi Gorgeous. Yeah, you know, okay. But a lot of... Her videos right now are being restricted, talking about the process of coming out and then uh, the feelings and being trans and all of that type of thing. All of that process, all of that, they're all restricted. 
but really, I guess the problem is <sighs> I mean, I guess the big controversy is concerning the LGBT part, but really, I mean, who's even using that strict filter? You know, YouTube said that maybe one to like four percent of people will actually use that. So, I mean, it seems like it's not a big deal, but you know, I guess the point is talking about the LGBTQIA. I'll just say queer. It's easier to sign as queer. Um, you know, that information should not be restricted. Like, you know, remember, maybe, you know, not on YouTube, but I remember one time, um, one of the jobs that I had, I'm not going to say which one, but obviously now they have specific restrictions of websites you can go to at work. Um, you can't access Facebook and, you know, whatever, things like that, which is fine. But I remember one of my coworkers, who is a lesbian, um, was trying to find a bed and breakfast um, for she, and I think at that time her fiancé, but now a wife. Um, but anyways, she happened to be looking to ones that cater for queer people, you know, which is really nice, being inclusive. And that the, that website, because of the word gay being involved, was blocked. And I'm like, she's not, like, looking up, you know, like, porn, you know, but... It's just really ridiculous. Yeah. That kind of relates to, you know, the principle of, you know, what they think means to be queer. Like, you know, what that word relates to. And everybody thinks, oh, it's all about sex and it's dirty and, you know, it's porn or, you know, it's a it's a big deal. But, you know, really... No, I mean, some of it, yes, of course, there's some of that. And that's the same, you know, it's being straight. It's the same thing. So that shouldn't matter. But you need to focus on, it's just more than the sex part of it. There's more than that. You know, you know, we used to have regular things we talk about, you know, sharing our experiences or, you know, different safe queer places and that type of thing. You know, that has nothing dirty in it. You know, it's not explicit. So. Well, I think really the point of having the filter is really stupid because almost nobody's going to use it. And in my opinion, that's going to. Sorry, I have a hair. Anyways, I think that that's typically for you know, kids, but. They already have another YouTube app, the kids app, and it's already famous. So who else is going to be using that? Maybe really, like, highly conservative people? I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry, maybe this is stereotyping, but they probably wouldn't be wanting to include queer anyways. So who's it really punishing? You know? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just stupid. Yeah. That's stupid. Talk about that. Want to talk about uh, Pride? <laughs> no. Toronto. I always think of Toronto when I think of Pride, but do you want to talk about our recent weekend? Yeah, so recently we went to Toronto, um, this past weekend, to visit some friends. And who is going to be involved in a video coming up, hopefully within the next month? Coming soon. Very soon. We will release the video. It'll be fun it's a good video yeah yeah i didn't really watch like the two of you talking during the filming because i'm gonna watch the video so many times but anyways it'll be a surprise for me yeah so really we're pretty lucky because i had friday off and all that worked out and we had it out yeah we needed to because there was so much snow well and it's funny because really friday morning we could have left earlier but I couldn't. I had to hold off because I was waiting until 10 o'clock in the morning to purchase tickets for a Tool concert because they're going to be coming to our town uh, this summer. So I was really excited about that. So I was just waiting and waiting and waiting and then I got the tickets. So for myself and a group. Yeah. Right at 10 o'clock. You got them. Yeah. I clicked and clicked and I refreshed and I refreshed and I refreshed and I got it. Finally. No, no, no. It's Claire. So, finally got it. Wonderful. It all worked out. So, anyways, then we had it out. Water. I forgot my drink. Ugh. 
yeah, we share. So anyways, we went out after that and it was pretty easy drive. Got there, no problem. I uh, made it to our friend's apartment and went in just kind of, you know, just kind of relaxed a little bit, put our things away and just kind of talked, you know, caught up a little bit. And then once we were ready, then we headed to downtown Toronto to kind of explore. It was really, it was an adventure. Always an adventure. So what happened was that night we had a tour. It was part of the city for a specific theater company. And I don't really remember everything that was supposed to happen, but they were supposed to have uh, like a guided tour. And there were some hearing people who had headphones for like an audio tour. And then there was a woman who was supposed to kind of narrate for us. who were the deaf people. And they were supposed to have like an actual professional interpreter with us or somebody was supposed to come and help us, right? No. I know they had the student interpreters there, but how, wasn't there a deaf person coming? They were supposed to have a signed video that we were supposed right, to watch. Right, 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 right. Yeah, they said, well, what we're going to do is there's two student interpreters, just kind of help in general, you know, if they need things. But they said, we'll have the group go to the studio of, for the theater company and then they'll have a video there and they'll have a person interpreting the video, which means that, you know, they'll have the tour and then we'll just watch them on the tour. And everyone was kind of like, eh, Leanne, go away. So anyways, we were kind of all just like, no, we really wanted to do the guided tour. I know that would be really fun instead of just sitting there watching a screen. Well, we wanted to have the same experience of seeing Toronto. But the problem was is that they only had the two student interpreters. and. They were fine, you know, they could do interpreting, but not that fast type of interpreting, you know. And so they're like, well, I don't know. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I can just go ahead and interpret for the tour. It wasn't that long anyways. Wonderful. It wasn't that long. So I was like, well, sure. I mean, I wanted to walk around too. I thought, well, it'd be more fun. So anyways, that was a very last minute thing, but we did it. So we did the guided tour and we got on the transit. That's the right sign, right? Yeah. So, you know, like the um, like the car with the wires, trolley? Street car. Yeah, a street car. You know, that. So anyways, we got on that, and then we got off, we walked around, da 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 and it was really fun. And then we went into their studio, and they had, you know, different exhibits, and it was really interesting. We got to play a game, and you want to explain that? It was the best. Really, the best part was they had like a cool, small, uh, you know, different exhibits and things. But the coolest part was if you go all the way in the back, they had like a little room, and you went in. It was really dark, and it had like pillows all over the floor with blankets everywhere, and uh, it was just to try to kind of seem cozy and relaxed or whatever. So it was cool. So some other people were in there already in like a little circle, and. They had the student interpreters in there, so they went ahead and interpreted. So it was a good experience for them to do that. Yeah, very easy for them. So we played a game called Cards Against Fragility. 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 Okay. That. So, anyways, it's the same concept as Cards Against Humanity, but kind of the opposite. It was really interesting. So they had the black cards and the white cards, the same as Cards Against Humanity. And the black cards had, like, different situations or, you know, things or whatever. And then the white cards had different responses. And when you got a black card, you had to say, you know, blah, 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 I'm offended because, and then blank. And then the other people who had the white cards would have to put down different reasons why you would be offended by whatever the topic was. So it was really cool, like a very different concept. Well, and some of the cards were really funny, you know, because they were ridiculous. And some of them actually, like, wow, you know, those could be real things or concepts. But they actually made those cards. But they said that they are going to be selling that, I guess, as part of a fundraiser. So if we get any information about that, we will definitely let you guys know. Because I think it's a really good game. It could help people kind of think about, you know, like, sometimes it would say ridiculous things. But sometimes it was really good things to think about. So maybe give it to some people who need it, you know, some help with diversity and understanding concepts. Kind of like, oh, you know, Cheetos over there at the White House. Well... If somebody buys a game, send it to the White House. Oh, Trump. 
I mean, well, either really. Like, isn't it to Mar-Lago? Isn't that where he goes, like, every weekend for vacation? Probably there more than the White House. Oh, I'm sorry, politics. What? What? Anyways. So, it was a really fun game. I really liked it. And then also, they had, like, one really interesting exhibit. Um, it was, like, like a, like a ring, and then it had ribbons that would go down from the ring, you know, kind of like almost like a curtain around there, like a circular curtain, um, kind of like a, a mobile, you know, like that. But anyways, each strip of ribbon had some phrase or something written on it that people either asked them or they've heard, but it was all very negative things. So reading all of that was really interesting. And you're supposed to like go into the middle and then look around and read all of the uh, things, and it also had a mirror too, so it was interesting to think about that. You want to talk about the color one? That was a cool idea. Yeah, they had um, different, like, a color palette. Uh, like, one color shade was on, like, one piece of wood, and most of them were in the range of, like, red, brown, like a red, brown, purple kind of range, and they had those all over, and then what you did is you had to think, you know, it was the first thing that came to mind when you see that color. And then what do you want to call it? So then different people would write different things that like markers that you could use. And then people could put all their ideas on the boards and see a variety of different perspectives of what that color means to each person. So it's a really interesting concept. No. He always takes forever to move. He just wanted to join dinner, too. That. So, and then, um, I think, you done? No, I still have one left. I have part of one and lots of potatoes, which I probably won't finish the potatoes. Um, we'll be done with the video. But anyways, um, there was one, it was like a, I don't know, like a big thing. I don't know how to describe it. But inside, they were talking about... It's called the Right Now Conference. Uh, they had it in Canada back in the 90s, I think like 92, 93 or something like that. But anyways, they were talking about what's called misappropriation of voice. So that means like, for example, a good example is the deaf community. You know, they have, so to speak, a voice. They have something they want to say. But then someone in the hearing community says, oh, no, we'll help you with that and push them out of the way and then speak for them. So it's misappropriation of voice. So they talked about that, and it's interesting, inside there was like a big piece of paper rolled up in like a scroll, and then you took it out, and there was a question on there, and you were supposed to write an answer, and then roll it and put it back, and then somebody else can write an answer. So I thought that was a really cool one, too. I think, I think overall it was a really good show. I liked it a lot. Yeah, and it was cool because really... It was all just very simple. They used simple materials, you know, pieces of wood or, uh, you know, cardboard. You know, just simple things. And still, it had a really powerful impact. It really made you think. You know, they didn't have to have a bunch of fancy hoo-ha things. It was just very simple, but powerful at the same time. I really like that. Yeah, and we encourage you guys, you know, um, we are going to be making a video talking about ways to... Uh, like fight for your rights, you know, against uh, politics. But one thing you could do, which I can mention now, is do art. Show your art. Even if it's just you don't have any money or you have lots of money, really just simple things can show how you feel and show it through art. You can be creative in that way. And it can still have a big impact, you know. Art could just be pencil and paper, just a drawing, showing something on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you know, just show your art and show how you feel. And sometimes it might be easier for people to show their feelings through art than talking about themselves. You know, maybe you don't have the confidence to, you know, film yourself. But art, you can do that, and it still has a big impact. So I would do that. True. And then the next day, we just kind of had a really chill day all day. Just stayed in the apartment and played games all day, which, oh my gosh, was so funny. I think we played, I don't know, we played a lot of different games. Sticks. Yeah, there was Scarred this game, I don't know if they made sticks. it up or something, but anyways, there is a game called Sticks. 
So what they do is they had popsicle sticks, and then each one had like a, a different phrase saying like, uh, it's a card game. Um, so it would say like, a set of queens and a run of four, for example. And then what you would do is, I think there was like four different like decks of cards all mixed up together. And then each person would get 15 cards. And then you'd look, don't show anyone your stick, but you would look and see what you have. And then you try to match that. And if you match that, then you got to keep that stick. If the whole round went through and somebody was done with all their cards and you didn't get your stick, then that would mean you have to try, again, you're stuck with that stick up to three times and then you could switch out. But the point is to try and get seven sticks. But it's I kind of almost like the uh, card game phase 10, kind of. But uh, it's not as complicated, I guess. It is it is more challenging. Yeah, it's more, well, there's just a lot of different sticks that you could have, but really, it's a really long game. We didn't even finish it, but it was still really fun. I just, I got stuck with one stick for three times, like literally, and I had to switch out. I was so mad. I was really mad, really mad mad i was just so frustrated but we were just laughing so hard we were crying I, mean, I think we were literally crying and laughing all day but yeah now you're gonna be scarred for life of sticks yeah i never i told them the couple they're going to be coming probably in may or something and i said you are not allowed to bring sticks with you forbidden it's not allowed to come into my house for sure yeah i'll probably let them bring it in secretly you probably will so, anyways, I think, well, the pizza's done, and I'll probably just keep eating the potatoes, but that'll take me a while. So, I think we are going to end the video for today. So, hopefully, you guys liked our first mukbang video, and eating with us, and talking with us. Hopefully, you like the topics we talked about, and I'm curious, do you guys like this video? If you do, click like and leave a comment. Do you want us to do more mukbang videos? Um, you know, what kind of topics do you want us to talk about? Uh, maybe we can make something real fancy next time. I don't know. Or not. Maybe we'll just eat tater tots. I don't know. But anyways, uh, let us know and remember to subscribe. And if you liked it and you want to provide some support, you can do a few different things. Check out our Patreon page. Uh, there's different cool perks on there that you can do and support us in that way. Or you could do a one-time donation through Ko-fi. Um, click that and donate any amount that you want. That's up to you. And we always appreciate your support. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.